Jordan here. Joe. So you guys are joining us for the third week of Biohacking Your Stress. This is also our third attempt at trying to get this video done. The first time I got held up in a meeting. Yesterday we had technical difficulties. So we're giving this a third attempt. Sometimes that's what it takes. It does. All right. So um, this week we're talking about how stress can impact chronic inflammation. And inflammation is a huge deal for a lot of people because it's the kind of that subtle, sneaky um, thing in a lot of diseases and conditions people have, whether it's IBS or cardiovascular disease or rheumatoid arthritis, and sometimes even depression and anxiety can have an element of chronic inflammation. And what we know is that if your body is chronically inflamed, you can't have a healthy nervous system. If you're chronically inflamed, you can't have healthy muscle tissue. If you're chronically inflamed, you can't have a healthy brain, but you also can't simply just supplement your way out of an unhealthy lifestyle. There are things that you can do proactively and constructively to decrease inflammation, but you still also have to be mindful of some of the choices you're making on a daily basis. Um, I like to put it as, you have the constructive level of decision and you've got the destructive level. Where's the camera? There it is. And so every choice you make is going to add either constructive survival value to your life or it'll add destructive survival value to your life. And so when you put it like that, you're you're really kind of making this tug of war with decisions yeah. you're making. Well, it's like balance, right? It's, it's, like, yeah, it's like, you know, balance. if you were to add up all the decisions you make in a day and whether those decisions are a net positive for your mm -hmm. health or a net negative for your health and you know in all aspects of your health you, right. you need to look at that yep and just so you guys know um stress in and of itself is pro-inflammatory that means that it's going to heighten the inflammation response in your body and when you have a heightened inflammatory response you can't regulate cortisol which is your stress hormone very well you can't regulate blood sugar very well which is glucose and so it'll throw your systems out of balance yeah, so it's really important to understand that if you are under chronic stress, that you are going to be somewhat inflamed. And inflammation can lead to disease, right? Um, it's pretty much common in all diseases. Mm -hmm. uh, it's especially common in a lot of um, the more common prevalent ones and the ones that are actually really hard to treat or resolve. And so you need to get that under control. And a couple of ways to do that is, is through diet and lifestyle, right? Or the most important way actually to do it is through diet and lifestyle. And so we just want to cover some of the things that, you know, you need to watch out for. And so sugar is number one on the list, right? Sugar is not good for you. Um, and we're you, coming off Halloween. If you still got Halloween candy in your house, I mean, definitely ration it out or hide it from yourself and the kids. Yeah. Toss yeah. it. <laughs> yeah. And we're getting ready to go into, you know, uh, Thanksgiving. So that's pumpkin pie for me. Ooh, yeah. Pecan yeah. pie for pecan me. Pecan pie for her. And then we got uh, Christmas. And there's, I think we just do the pumpkin pie again. And there are a lot of Christmas cookie exchange <laughs> I do. Yeah. things. <laughs> Yeah, so there's a lot of things coming your way that aren't really great in the sugar realm. The other thing to watch out for is processed foods, right? So, I mean, and that's pretty obvious. You know, like fast foods aren't going to be the healthiest of choices. Um, eating um, you know, grains, a good amount of grains is, is very inflammatory for your body. And then, you know, something that you want to watch out for is dairy. You know, you can eat dairy. Just don't eat too much dairy. So, like, condiment-sized portions of dairy. So, I love cheese. But, you know, like one of those baby bells is probably a, a good amount of cheese to eat as a snack. Mm -hmm. um, staying away from um, excessive amounts of, of milk and things like that can be very oh, inflammatory. Really excessive amounts of anything. And I think yeah. um, one thing, too, when we talk about stress and food is stress eating is oftentimes something that, that people do to cope with, with stress. It's not the best avenue, but it's something we see a lot of. And so it's when you can fall into a lot of those patterns, too, of making unhealthy choices. Yeah, so, you know, it's just, you know, there are, there's a lot of good ways to help yourself with the inflammation. So staying away from some of those things I just mentioned is mm -hmm. really good. You know, on the positive side of that, though, um, you know, you can eat uh, nuts, you know, you can eat berries, you can eat uh, avocados, you can eat fish, you know. Um, all of those things are, are really good for you. So, you know, that's one way to, you know, get ahead of this. And there's, there are some supplements that you can consider some basic supplements for stress and inflammation management. Um, some of those are... Like omega-3 fatty acids are usually extremely good. They help to balance out the omega-6 and omega-3 ratio. So your omega-6 is going to be that um, inflammatory fat. A lot of times you see it from, from foods fried in um, corn oil or... 
Soybean oil. Um, soybean oil. I mean, yeah, any of the oils that are right. pretty much, any fried food is not going to be great. Um, so the omega-3, and you can get that from salmon. You can get it from tuna as well. And then magnesium is also really great because magnesium has a very calming effect on the body and on the muscles. So it, it helps to kind of put the brakes on, on a, lot of, a lot of what you're feeling. Um, one thing you didn't mention in your list, though, that I'm just going to make a plug for because I do love chocolate, is dark chocolate can be really good at kind of managing inflammation. Um, look for 70 to 80% co cocoa, though. If you go below that ratio, it's not going to have as much of an impact on helping to regulate cortisol. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. It's kind of a little more sugar and a little more milk too, right? Yes, so it's more inflammatory. <laughs> yeah, exactly. yeah, it would be. Um, yeah, so. And another good supplement too, you know, for distress reduction overall, um, you know, is ashwagandha mm -hmm. uh, and CBD. I mean, CBD is probably the, the biggest one right now that everybody's talking about. And, and number one research thing for CBD is anxiety and stress reduction. So yeah. it's a great uh, supplement to take as well. Um, that may be something that we want to do a, a series on in itself, um, just to kind of bring people to speed yeah. on that. So, um, any other suggestions that you have? I think that covers the basics. Just um, remember to chocolate. I guess yes, Sonia. Yes, <laughs> yeah. remember seventy yeah. percent cocoa. Yeah, CBD chocolate, Sonia. CBD <laughs> chocolate. All right, guys. So whatever it is you guys do to pour into yourselves and make yourselves just feel the best you possibly can remember you deserve it and your family deserves it so um, just make sure you're taking good care of yourself yeah take care of yourself especially during these holidays they're gonna be interesting <laughs> all right so we'll see you guys next week and have a good weekend bye y'all